Hi, welcome to another navigation challenge. In this one, you've got to plan the best route from the pond at A over to these small boulders known as whetstones at B. And this is one that we actually used on a recent navigation course that I ran for runners. Uh, and that's the exact challenge that they were given. So let's have a think about some of the problems on this. Now, first of all, we've got almost two kilometres from A to B over quite rough, pathless terrain. And halfway across, we've got this complex series of streams. It might be easy to get a bit confused and not know exactly which one of these that we're in. Another problem is that there's nothing close to our destination that we can navigate to and say we are definitely here um, and be able to take an accurate compass bearing and maybe pace out from there. Now, some people have suggested we could use this 545 spot height as our attack point. But the only trouble with that is if we look at it, it's just a spot height. So there's no cairn marked, there's no trig point, so there's no definite summit. Um, and it's only five metres higher than the contour around it. Maybe well, may well be one of those summits that you stand there and you think you're on the highest point, and then you look around and there's another little lump a bit further away that think that's the highest point, and you go to that one and you see another, you think that's the highest. Um, and you can, you can do that in good visibility, but imagine bad visibility. It'd be easy to convince yourself that you're on the high point and it might be somewhere there, and it's not actually the spot height marked on the map. So it's not really an accurate attack point that we can use. Um, so how did we go about it? Well, some suggestions were to do exactly that, which was to head just south of west across to that 545 height and then take a bearing in to the stones. But as we've just said, it's hard to identify that 545 height. Someone else suggested we could go across to the stream and identify this stream here, navigate to the end of it, and then take a bearing across to there. So that might work. The trouble with that is it might be quite hard to identify with all these streams, identify exactly which one we're on. Um, quite hard to follow a compass bearing accurately across over a kilometre of rough moorland pop at exactly there. Um, in which case you'd have to aim off slightly and go up, which still might work. So that was one option. Another option People were saying we could come across here and then pick up this break of slope where the ground starts to drop away steeply and then contour in. Um, again, that might work, but in bad visibility, if you're a little bit too far down the slope, you're looking at contouring in for quite a way. So a feature you might not see until you're within 50 metres of it. So that might be a tricky one. What we actually decided to do was to use this line of streams with the grouse butts in it to navigate. So how did we get to that? Rather than aiming straight across to it, we deliberately aimed off slightly to the south and aimed to hit Cartledge Brook here, knowing then that we had to turn right. And what we wanted to do was identify this little area here, which is the only part of the stream that runs east-west. So we'd know we're definitely on that point there. And we were then looking for the second stream coming in from the southwest. And we were hoping that we'd notice these grouse butts and be able to say confidently, right, yeah, we're on that one. Now, we learned a bit of a, an important lesson there, that these grouse butts are man-made features. 
and they might not be on the ground. We actually didn't find any grouse butts until we got to about that point there. So if you're expecting to see them there and say, yeah, this is definitely it, um, we, we can't really use that because they weren't there. And then the plan was to get to the end of the stream and navigate almost due west to hit the stones. Now the problem with that is if we get the bearing slightly wrong and we are slightly too north, too far north of the stones, we might end up overshooting to here before we realise we've gone too far. So instead of aiming straight for them, again we aimed off slightly to the south and we use this here as our attack point, which is this what we call break of slope where the ground starts to drop away. So if you look at our journey all the way from A, there is nowhere on that journey, apart from maybe this little drop here into Cartledge Brook, there's no way, nowhere that we're going downhill at all until we get to that point there. And then the ground starts to drop away quite steeply. So that break of slope, the change in angle of the slope where the ground starts to drop away is our attack point. And then from there, the plan was to take a short bearing and pacing for a couple of hundred meters to the stones. So even that in bad visibility would be quite a tricky thing to do. Um, however, that, that's what we did uh, and we found it. So that is the way we did it. It's not necessarily the only way of doing it, but it's the way we did it uh, and it worked for us. Hopefully you came up with something similar uh, and you thought about the process. Um, what a good little challenge there. So well done if you got it right. Have a look out for some more navigation challenges.